In this video, we are going to go over two word problems. The first word problem will have everything to do with the perimeter, and that'll be the perimeter of a rectangle. And the second word problem will have something to do with the area of a rectangle. So let's jump into this first word problem. You plan to build a fence around a rectangular yard of width 30 meters and length 50 meters. So I stop reading the word problem at this point because I have the opportunity to draw a picture. So rather than get overwhelmed by all those words, I'm gonna draw a rectangle. That's what we're told. We've got a yard that is 30 meters wide. So let me put that here, 30 meters wide, and then 50 meters long. Okay, let's keep reading now that we have that translated. The cost per meter of fencing is $25. Okay, let's keep that in the back of our mind. How much will the fence cost? All right, well, we're not directly asked for any kind of dimension here, but if we think about it, it's the cost is $25 per well, meter, and that's called a linear meter because we're not talking about square meters of fencing. If you lay out a fence, you're talking about length. So everything with this cost has to do with how much total fencing goes around the yard. So let me find the perimeter and then let's see what to do with that. We'll find the perimeter first to find the total fencing. Well, the perimeter formula is twice the length plus twice the width. And that will be equivalent to two times, and I like to put parentheses here to symbolize both the L value we're gonna be plugging in and the W value we'll be plugging in. Well, our length is 50, and our width is 30. So now I just have an order of operations problem to simplify. Two times 50 is 100, plus two times 30, working left to right with multiplication first, is 60. So our perimeter is equal to 160 meters. Okay, so we found the perimeter. The reason why we did that is we wanted to know the total amount of fencing we used. Now, we've got that our fencing is going to be $25. Ooh, $25 per meter, and we have 160 meters. That's gonna be a lot of money. How do we figure that out? Well, we have 160 meter sections, so 160 $25 sections. So we would multiply 160 by 25, because for every one meter, we're adding $25. So there's 160 $25 sections. So 160 times 25 will give us, oh boy, that's gonna give us $4,000, which is actually, depending on what part of the country, in the United States you are, not that much, and depending on where you are from the world, that might be a lot, or it might be a little. It's a lot of money to me, that's for sure. $4,000 for the fence, that's it translated the word problem, wrote out a picture as we had the opportunity, and then kept going from there. I had fun on this one. I'm gonna have even more fun on the next problem. Stay tuned for the other side of the video for an area word problem. And here we are about to unwrap one heck of a cool word problem on the other side of this video filled with rectangle word problems. We've got a cement basketball court will be built with dimensions of 100 feet by 40 feet. Now, I'm gonna start with just that. Let's draw out a rectangular basketball court, not drawn to scale at all. So this will be 100 feet, like so, by 40 feet. And I'll put the 40 feet over there. Let's make sure we got our units involved. So there's our basketball court. It is assumed, by the way, that that basketball court is a rectangle. Sorry if I assumed that you thought maybe it was an oval. It is a rectangle. Then it says it'll be built in a rectangular field that is 200 feet by 70 feet. Okay, so it's gonna be built within a field that is something like this. So it's gonna be built in a bigger rectangular field like that. And that is 200 feet by 70 feet. I'll put those dimensions here and here. So now what we've done is we basically translated that whole first sentence. It's a long sentence and we feel good about it, I hope. It then says how much of the original field will surround the basketball court after the court is built. So you've got this basketball court that's gonna be placed on top of this field, and we've got all of this remaining area, I'll just put like slashes through it, that we wanna find. So we're basically being asked how much of that remaining area is there? When we talk about the amount that something covers something else, we're talking about surface, and that's how I assume that this is gonna be area, I assume correctly. So let's think about this in a more general, simple way. The area that we want, so I'll call that the area um, remaining, so the area remaining is, ooh, I spelled that wrong, my goodness. Let's just call it the area REM, 
area remaining, just so I don't have to go with the spelling and rewrite it again. So the area remaining of the field is equal to the area of the whole field. So I'll call it the area of the whole. And then if we subtract from that or take out the area that we've covered, we'll have the remaining amount, right? So we are going to subtract out the area of the court. So I'll call that area with a C below. So these things right here just designate the whole area, the court area, and then the remaining area. So now all we have to do is find the area of each of these and then evaluate it into our simple overall idea. Let's do it. So the area of the whole, if we think about that, well, that's going to be 200 by 70, right? Length times width. So that is 200 times 70. And then from that, we will subtract the area of the part that we are taking out. And that'll leave us with the area that remains. That'll be 100, that's a length times 40. So 100 times 40. Okay, from here, we do some simple calculations and we'll have our answer. 200 times 70 is 14,000. Ooh, that is a large number. Minus 100 times 40, which is 4,000. So the 14,000 represents the area, and that'll be in square feet of the entire field. Then when we put the court on it, we took up 4,000 square feet, and when we subtract the two of those, we get the remaining area around, which is 10,000 square feet. And I make sure to have my units there at the end. And that's it. Solving word problems, especially those with geometry and with area, is all about breaking down the word problem into a simple idea. Put it into words first and then execute that plan because oftentimes you'll have a lot of simple pieces to a problem that when put together can solve a more difficult or complex problem. And that's a more general way of thinking for math. That's why this word problem is so worthwhile, right? In life in general, so many of the most complex problems, the hard problems there are to solve, are difficult because it is hard for us to decide what are the easy pieces we have to break the problem down into first. Once we have those easy pieces and we have that plan, then we execute the plan and good things happen. There you have it all, a lesson for life and a lesson for math.